Yeah, hi everyone, here's a bog standard question on regression, whether you're studying regression in statistics or econometrics. We're given an estimated model. You recognize the multiple linear regression model because it's got more than one explanatory variable, it's got three. And the question is which of the slope coefficients are significantly different from zero at the 5% significance level? Okay, I'm going to kind of just solve this mechanically without much discussion. I'll leave that for another video if you're interested. First, let's get the notation right. So this model, this suppose that the true model is this. So the betas, they stand for the true parameters and they are constants. Um, from data, here we've got a sample of eight observations. We get the estimated model and we're at the estimated model like this with the hats on the coefficients. So beta zero hat is an estimate of the intercepts, which in that case is 2.2 estimate of the slope for x1, a partial slope, is that number and so on. We'll just do the test for the beta 1. Step 1, we state the null and the alternative hypothesis. When you've got a question saying is a coefficient significantly different from 0, it's the null is that the coefficient in question is 0 versus the alternative that the parameter coefficient is not zero. So you recognize the two-tailed test. Step two will compute the test statistic and you just memorize. It takes the form of estimate minus the hypothesized value, which here is zero, divided by the standard error of that estimate. So here we have it's going to be that number divided by that number because it says standard errors are in parentheses. Okay, this comes to 20.8 exactly. Third step, I'm going to look up the critical value at the 5% significance level. The table we use is a table from the t distribution, and we need the degree of freedom for that table. A degree of freedom is given by the number of observations in the sample minus the number of parameters. Here it's using a notation t, though we usually use little n to denote you know, the sample size, it's 80, minus the number of parameters in the mean part of the model, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4 i.e. intercept and three partial slopes. So we've got 76 degree of freedom. Next we look up the table. The t distribution is symmetric, it's pretty much like the normal around zero, so it looks like this. But we look in the table for the 5% level, it's a two-tailed test because it's not equal to, it means it's, an, it's a two-tailed test. And you find, using tables, that critical value is 1.9909 and here since by symmetry you know the other number is minus. So in the table we get this one and by symmetry we know that the value is that one. So step four what we do is we take our test statistic and compare it to the values here. So the rejection region just say that the test statistic can take anything, any value along here. We're not looking looking up this way, we're looking along this way. Okay, so we're seeing where does our test statistic lie along here? Well, 20.8 is bigger than 1.99, so dot, dot, dot. our test statistic is way out here somewhere. All right, we're not really interested in how far so long as it's greater than. So, so long as it's not lying within the two regions, so as long as it's not lying in here somewhere, it's lying outside those regions, the shaded region, then we reject the null. So, so step four, the conclusion then, since our test statistic is lies in the rejection region, we reject the null, the null being that the partial slope is zero at the 5% significant level. In jargon, another way to say it is that the beta one is significant at 5%. If we didn't reject the null, we would say that beta 1 is not significant. So there you go, guys, in four stages of tests. All right, I just want to go back, because I've just done the mechanical calculation now. I just want to go back and just point out maybe some common errors, mistakes that students make when computing these things. Step 1, common error here is to write like this. Right, what's wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with this, guys, is that you are testing that the estimated or 
parameter is equal to zero. Uh, that's not the point of um, statistics or econometrics. We are trying to use the sample data to say something about the true, the true value, i.e. we've got these values here and we'll try and the not using the numbers to see what can we say about the true model. So we're going from the estimated model, what can I infer about the true model? Second thing is uh, step two. I want you to, I've written this on purpose. You might say, why did you put minus zero? Because often in textbooks and maybe in your lecture notes, the lecturer will just say to test for significance, just take the estimate and divide it by the standard error. In other words, you just do this. Uh, why I've not kind of um, said it this way is because sometimes the t-test may be used to test something more general. It may be used to test that a coefficient is equal to some number different from zero, in which case then this would be minus whatever that number is. So it's just easy just to remember general form. Step three, um, next question is how many decimal places do I quote my answer? Here it was 28.8 exact. Well, if you look in your tables here, you've got t tables given to four decimal places, so I don't need, if I'm doing it, more than four decimal places for my answer at that stage. Next thing is once you get hang of doing a lot of these questions, then if you've got a big number like this, you just kind of just say, oh, we reject it at the 5% level because you know you're going to reject it. Why? Because if you look in the t-table, guys, you find that any number like bigger than 3 for very, even for very small degrees of freedom, like 2 and 3, is going to be around 3 or smaller. So 20.8 is going to be is way bigger than three, if you know what I mean. So any number over here, if you get bigger than three, you know you're going to automatically reject at the five percent level. But anyway, I did it for you just you know so you can see the steps. If you're unsure how to read tables, the t-tables, I've made a video ages ago on how to use t-tables. That's somewhere on YouTube. Step three and four. Some students say, can't you use a p-value approach? Yes, you can. Uh, often this is the way that you see it taught in textbooks, so I've just done it this way. If you want p-value approach, I can kind of do it that way in another date. Okay, that's all I've got to say really. If we go back up here, I have done the test for the significance of this guy here. You may discuss amongst yourselves, if you're bothered, the significance of beta 2 and beta 3. Let us know what you get. Cheers guys!